Hey, welcome to our class of Tuesday Night Beer School with me, Chad, of Chad's Beer Reviews. As you can see, I'm going alone. Long story behind that, so let's just roll right into the class. Let's roll right into the lesson. The lesson, or the, the lecture, I should say. All right, so we are on uh, what is a classic style, but it seems like it's like kind of faded away. Good old 18B American Pale Ale, overall impression, and average strength. Hot forward, pale American craft beer with sufficient supporting malt to make the beer balanced and drinkable. The clean hop presence can reflect classic or modern American or New World hop varieties with a wide range of characteristics. All right, so let's go to the history. Modern American craft beer era adapt adaptation of English pale ale, which is funny, there's no style called English pale ale, but uh, reflecting indigenous ingredients, your Nevada pale ale was the first made in 1980 and helped popularize the style. Part of the explosion of popularity of IPAs, the style was the most well-known and popular American craft beers. All right, so carries ingredients, basically neutral pale malt, New World, by New World, they mean like Australian or New Zealand, you know, and obviously everything on the Western Hemisphere. Neutral to lighty, fruity, American or English ale yeast, small amounts of very specialty malts, yeah. All right, so tip style comparison, I mean, it's pretty much obvious. It's like a IPA, but not as hoppy. Um, some overlap in color between pale ale and amber ale. Um, pale ale be, generally be cleaner, have a less caramel tea malt profile, less body alpha, more finishing hops. Less bitterness in the balance and alcohol strength than American IPA, obviously. Maltier, more balanced and drinkable, and less intensely hot focus and bitter than session strength American IPAs, aka session IPAs. More bitter and hoppy than a blonde ale. All right, so look at our gravity, IBUs, 30 to 50, wow. And, you know, ABV, 4.5 to 6.2, and commercial examples. Um, well, I've got at least one of these. Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, like, this is the American Pale Ale. Although the the other one I have, this is like kind of a, a contender or up and comer. Sweetwater 420 Extra Pale Ale. By the way, this was canned on September 1st, so it's like just over two months old. This is a little bit older. This was bottled on June 6th, I think. June 2nd. Alright, so I'm gonna pour these and we'll get right back into aroma. Alright, so I've got the beers poured. I got the Sierra Nevada and the fancy Spiegel glass and i've got the sweetwater 420 in the glass glass we'll come back to appearances in a minute as always we start with aroma so let's start with sierra nevada because yeah uh very piney i don't think i'd go as far as say resiny like it doesn't smell like sticky and sappy it just smells like walking through like you know a pot like a christmas tree um you know sale or something like that but also like a a floral kind of aroma you know so kind of like a i guess like if you're walking through like the home depot or walmart garden section around christmas <laughs> smelling the christmas trees and the flowers and stuff let's give the sierra Nevada, or sweet water okay so this one is a little more dank definitely kind of that you know new england style of uh those dank spicy grassy kind of hops a little you know kind of a weed kind of a sense to it it doesn't strike me as being like citrusy, like just faintly, but it's to me, so it's like the sweet water is like on the dank grassy side and the Sierra Nevada is just all pine and flowers. Is that how it should smell? By the way, the Sierra, or, sorry, the sweet water, as far as malt, same thing as the Sierra Nevada, like really no distinct malt character other than just standard two rows, like no toast. No caramel, nothing like that. Let's give a look at the specs here. Aroma, moderate to moderately high hop aroma from American or New World hop varieties with a wide range of possible characteristics, including citrus, floral, pine, resin, spice, tropical fruit, stone, berry, stone fruit, berry, or melon. None of these specific characteristics are required, but a hoppy aroma should be apparent. I would agree. Both of these have a hoppy aroma. Low to moderate, neutral to grainy maltiness supports the hop presentation and can show low amounts of specialty malt character, for example, bread, toast, biscuit, or character, or sorry, caramel. Fruity esters optional, up to moderate in strength, fresh dry hop aroma optional. All right, so it does say, I mean, both of these beers are, are right there, and it does say can show low amounts of specialty fruit, or sorry, specialty malt character, you know, but it does say low to moderate neutral grainy maltiness. I mean, that is that is right on for both beers, I mean. All right, so how am I going to score these? Well, 
I mean, the Sierra Nevada, the style guidelines are basically written around the spear. Is there any reason not to give it a 50? But again, we're, we're always judging the container we have in front of us. So this thing is, you know, about five months old. So I might have lost a little something. But I mean, it's it's right there. I'm thinking 10 or 11. I'll start with a 10, but I would have no problem bumping that back up to an 11. Same thing with the, uh, the Sweetwater. It's a little bit fresher, so it has like a bit more stronger nose. So I will go 11 for that one. All right, so appearance. I'm not sure how this is coming off on camera. The, the Sierra Nevada looks kind of red on camera. Trust me, it is not. It is, I'd probably call that orange. I'm hold a napkin behind it. You guys can, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. See, it's like orange. It's got a bit of a haze to it. Or yeah, it's a little bit of a little bit hazy. I mean, otherwise it's, you know, fairly clear. And then obviously, if you look up, check my Instagram, you'll see how the beer looks when it's first poured. And as far as the sweet water, it's almost the same shade of orange. This one's like slightly more pale. And this, this is kind of like a soapy, soapy head, whereas the Sierra Nevada is more of like a frothy head. And this one, again, is, you know, a bit hazy. I don't know. I mean, I can see carbonation in it, but I don't see like you know, chunks or anything floating around in there. So uh, let's check the specs on appearance. Pale golden to amber, moderately large white to off-white head with good retention, generally quite clear. Okay, I would I would say both of these beers are generally quite clear, but they're not, it's not, bris, you know, brilliant clarity like a German Pilsner or something like that. So um, yeah, they're, they're both right there. Uh, I am going to go three out of three. On appearance for both beers. All right, so here comes the best part. We will start. We'll start with the world champion Sierra Nevada. Cheers. Mm. Tastes pretty much the same as it smells. Um, definitely a hoppy. I would say yeah, a hop centric palette uh, again uh piney but not resiny a little bit of a floral kind of a flavor there it's bitter but it's not like super bitter like this is if you hit this me blind like i'm at a party i'd be like oh this is a pale ale this is not this is not an ipa this is not a session ipa like the bitterness just isn't there i don't know what the ibus are i can probably look it up on untap but it doesn't it's not a punch you in the face with bitterness it actually has like almost like a little bit of like a soapy kind of thing to it. Um, that could just be, I mean, I'm sure it's just from the hops there. But the bitterness is, it's enough to like notice that, the, you know, it's like certainly much more bitter than a standard lager, but it is way below an IPA. All right, let's give the sweet water a try. Cheers again. Hmm. Well, I will say it does not taste nearly as dank and grassy as it smells. In fact, I'd say like the flavor on this is like actually kind of in the same vein as the Sierra Nevada. It's quite piney and floral. But it does have that that dank kind of spicy kind of flavor to it. And it's interesting because they call this an extra pale ale. But oddly enough, I would say like this, the sweet water is less bitter than the Sierra Nevada. Usually these so-called extra pale ales, which Untapped does consider a style, BJCP doesn't consider that a style. Um, they are like exactly what they say, you know, like you know more, more of everything for a pale ale, but just not to the extent of an IPA. Yeah, uh, almost a little perfumey, uh, low kind of dank flavor. Bitterness on this is is much lower than this here in Nevada. I do I do get like a tiny little bit of like an orange orange note in there but again i would not call this like a citrusy beer it's this is more um dank grassy and like a little bit a little bit of piney it does have like kind of a soapy character uh, as for the malt same thing with the sierra nevada like it is not i'm not call it toasty when i call it caramel it's like it's just it's just there Ugh. all right so let's check the specs for flavor Hop and malt character, similar to aroma, same intensities and descriptors apply. I hate when they do that. It's like, 
That's true for pretty much every beer. They pretty much taste like they smell. Caramel flavors are often absent or fairly restrained, but are acceptable as long as they don't clash with the hops. Moderate to high bitterness. Mm, yeah, I would say both of these beers are moderate. I might even call the um, sweet butter moderately low. Something like that around there. Clean fermentation profile. True. Um, fruity yeast esters can be moderate to none, although many hop varieties are quite fruity. Yeah, it's it's hard to tell like what's the fruity from the hops and what's the fruitiness from the yeast. Medium to dry finish. Yeah, I would say both finish on the, the drier side, but not like bone dry. Bounces typically toward the late hops and bitterness. The malt presence should be supportive, not distracting. Hop flavor and bitterness often linger into the finish, but the aftertaste should generally be clean and not harsh. Fresh dry hop flavor optional. Yeah, like the dry hop flavor they're talking about there, that would be like the grassy kind of note you get from like really extended um, um, dry hopping. All right, so how are we going to score these? Again, Sierra Nevada, this is the yardstick by which the style is measured. Um, this this bottle is good. It's it's not outstanding or world-class, but it's it's really, really good for the style. I'm going to go pretty high on this one. I'm going to go 18. For the, the Sweetwater, I'm going to go a little bit lower. I think this is closer to like a, a 16. Which is really strange because it's a fresher can. It just the hops on this are seem a little lacking to me. All right, so let's talk about mouthfeel. We will start with the Sierra Nevada. Not surprising. You know, for a pale ale, that's got some heft to it. Um, I would call it like at least a medium body. Carbonation is probably about moderate, maybe moderately high. Um, it's got a light kind of crisp crispness to it um it doesn't have that smooth creamy texture of like a hazier or you know so many other ipas so yeah probably about medium body moderate moderately high carbonation i would say it's smooth finishes quite dry um hops linger but some sweet beer speaking of sweet let's try the sweet water Okay, so this one has like pretty much the same weight in carbonation as the Sierra Nevada, but it's something I notice is the actual texture, like the way it feels across my tongue. The sweet water actually has a little bit of like a smoothness to it, like where the the Sierra Nevada is like, you know, kind of crisp. This is a little bit more smooth. I'm going to go as far as to say it's creamy. Um, I mean, you saw like both these beers, they're not crystal clear, but they're way, way far from like being you know, heady topper or something like that. But um, yeah, that Sierra, or sorry, the Sweetwater has like a slight smoothness to it. All right, so let's check the specs for mouthfeel. Medium light to medium body. Yeah, I'd put both of these at medium. Moderate to high carbonation. Yep. Overall smooth finish without astringency or harshness. I agree. I mean, hops linger a little on both. I would not call them astringent. Certainly far, far from harsh. Um, yeah, uh, I could probably go five uh, they don't mention like texture on this um I'll, I'll go five for the sierra nevada and i think i'll go four for the sweet water just because it that smoothness seems a little out of place for a um uh, a pale ale it should be more on the crisp side overall i mean sierra nevada this is the king of pale ales this particular bottle it's a little old but it's on point i'm gonna give us a nine and the sweet water, I'm going to give this an 8. So we got 45 and 42. I, I don't really see much reason. I you know I, I said I could bump some of these numbers up or down a point. Um, I think these are, are really fair scores. Uh, these are, you know, one of the most popular, probably the most, I have to say like this is like number one and number two most popular pale ales that you can get. I mean, these are pretty much, as far as I know, I mean, no, this is, Probably in all 50 states and many foreign countries. In the Sweetwater, these, these guys have been around for, what, 10 or 15 years now? This used to be like a chase beer back when I lived in New York, and like now you get this in Walmart. So, yeah, if you can find either of these, if you, you want to see like what a real pale ale is, obviously this is the best example you're probably going to find, but this one is also a pretty comparable um, example. So... Hope you learned something. Got any questions, comments, let me know in the description. Or, sorry, in the comments. I'll write there in the description. 
And I will see you guys next week for another class. So until then, cheers. Somebody brewed it. Chad just reviewed it. Thanks for watching Chad's beer review. Trust me, the next episode will be a lot better. 